Bachelman and it's restaurant review time here on Channel 77. Uh, Saturday, February 19th, I believe, coming to the end of middle of the end of February of 2005 already. Well, we're here again uh, to bring you some great information. As you know, our primary focus is on bringing you restaurants of the city and emerging musical artists. But as you also know, as of last year, we started a third letter R, like the three R's: uh, restaurant, rhythms, and artists. And when we don't have a restaurant schedule, as we do today, we have a great artist to present to you with some fabulous works. And uh, I think you'll really be pleased if you stay tuned. Uh, what we always do after, of course, you know, we do have a musician today, not in studio, but a lovely lady uh, from our archives. And what we're going to do is go ahead and let's hear from Miss Jan Bell. Let's see what, what we, she's got to uh, play for us. And then come on back and we'll introduce you to our artist. Okay. So this is Cowgirl Blues and I Miss My Sweet Miss in Missouri and they're both on my album I made in Brooklyn called No Country. I got my cowgirl hat, I got my city boots, guitar on my back, I got them country blues, country blues, country blues. Can't see the stars are shining, feel like busting loose. I see the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan too. I see the East River flowing, baby. Down to you, down to you, down to you. I see the river flowing, baby, down to you. I see the mountain valley and the prairie sky. I can hear them coyotes howling. But it's all in my mind I got my cowgirl sister down in New Orleans When I say country blue She knows just what I mean, what I mean, what I mean Cowgirl sister, what down in New Orleans I got my cowboy brother mighty Tall and lean says, come on, up to Montana, be my country queen, country queen, country queen, cowboy in Montana, mighty tall and lean. I see the mountain valley and the prairie sky. I can hear them coyotes howling, but it's all in my mind. I kick off my city boots I'm gonna blow my stack Right in some old caboose Doggy companion. 
companion at play with a swing in her hips his name on her lips I wish I was that doggy today cause I miss my sweet mess in Missouri or to dance neath the Milky Way to Ella and Nora and Cesaria of Aura in Missouri one glorious day now I'm back in this beautiful city where all my dreams used to be but I think of her and hear a soft angel bay Playing sweet symphony That was the cover of Miss Jan Bell's or Bell. Is it Bell or Bell? Anyway, CD. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it. It was kind of a little CNW song or something with the harmonica, but very cute, a little bouncy number, huh? Eh? Uh, she'll be back for a couple more during the show as usual. And again, folks, I forgot to apologize. I guess you you hear this uh, constant nasal dripping here, but hopefully it'll be gone sometime. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue, and as we mentioned, we've got an um, upcoming uh, artist who's been around for a while, so he's not totally upcoming, but a uh, real nice painter who I met during the week. Uh, Fortunately, his gallery is in the neighborhood, so I took a stroll over there and was really impressed. And without further ado, we want to go ahead and introduce you to Mr. Martin Luke. Martin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. I'm, um... why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and... Uh, then we'll get in and show the people some of the great work you're doing. Well, I came uh, 10 years ago to the city of New Orleans from Buenos Aires, Argentina, where um, I gained my uh, gift as an artist. Swim, huh? Yes, that was very long. That okay. was very long. And um, I just found this city so spicy and beautiful. Then I fell in love with the architecture of the city. I started painting, you know, the city, cityscapes. And, uh, making my way out as an artist I found a I feel this warm warm charm that made me stay here and establish myself here as a local artist and um, and I did it and I did it well what's good about you gonna see this a second is that Martin really since he's gotten here has been inspired by our, mainly our residential architecture, especially turn of the century and earlier homes. And as you know, we have several artists doing that because it's a constant inspiration to not only the artists, but also the people who live here and the visitors. So uh, he's got a great, uh, home, almost innumerable supply that'll keep him painting and keep him here local for many, many years. So how did you decide on painting as opposed to, what influenced you at first into actually getting into painting? Well, uh, as a child, I grew up uh, seeing work from uh, Martin, uh, say, uh, Picasso, Van Gogh, and uh, a lot of local artists in the city of Buenos Aires. Of course, it's a big city, and um, I fall in love with the architecture over there. I always, uh, the houses, the architecture, the lines of the buildings, they're always calling me, and uh, I feel like a terrible attraction to put that in my own view, in my own dreams, on a canvas. And uh, I always pick, you know, different techniques. And uh, watercolors, pencils. I start very, very, very young. I start painting at the age of six. Of course, uh, that was my first uh, piece I sold to one of my aunts. And uh, it made me very happy. And uh, I found a lot of support from my family. who They pushed me into the art from long, long time ago. 
But you gravitated to uh, oil, oil and canvas, is that right? Yes, that's right, Bob. And um, I found a very uh, amazing, uh, the, I love the smell of oil. Mm -hmm. I love working with oils. It gives me time. Uh, the colors are very vibrant. Of course, you have, you know, too many different uh, types of oils. And I stay with the light, very light, fast oils and uh, very good quality oils, uh, very good reds, candy reds, medium reds. I feel attracted by the violet, purples, and uh, blacks, greens. Uh, it's like I almost taste the paint. <laughs> wow. That's the kind of description we need, huh? Well, let's <laughs> tell them a little bit more about your gallery because uh, that's, of course, um, in addition to what they see today, and also we'll talk about your website in a second, that's where they can see even more of these great works and, of course, hopefully come on down and, and take some home for their, for their own home. Um, as we mentioned, they're on, uh, in my name, up on Magazine, uh, one block off of Napoleon, uh, really, I've uh, forgotten, the co what's that corner street, uh, Cadiz, or is it? It's Cadiz. Yeah, in between Jenna and Cadiz, and it's uh, right next, in fact, years ago on the corner was a, a very famous gallery called the Carol Robinson Gallery, and it's, uh, I don't think it's open now, I know Carol sold it years ago, and it was several different things, but what's interesting is, this actually looks like the, uh, it's a great gate, gated garden leading in, into the interior, and filled with a lot of uh, uh, sculpture out in the garden, which really is entrancing. And what he has out in front to lure you to that gate is one of the Festival of Fins. For those who have been a native or been around here for a while know that a while back that was New Orleans' copy of Chicago's Cows, when we put uh, a lot of artists, gave them a chance to express themselves in public works of art that were eventually auctioned off. And uh, Martin has graciously bought one of those, uh, redecorated it to his style, and put it right there on the outside as a leading entry to his gateway. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your gallery, uh, about the interior and exterior, and your hours so people can know, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at your paintings. Uh, well, I, the whole idea, I started the gallery uh, one year ago, and uh, First, of course, I supply most of the local art uh, galleries with my art and, uh, around the country. And I need a studio. I need to find a place to paint and to uh, store my paintings into the dry. Of course, oil takes between 7 and 14 days to dry. So I needed that place. I open the studio. I leave my gate door open. And people start walking in and asking me the prices. How much is this painting? How much is that painting? And uh, I start selling out of the studio. I found it amazing. So I get the license. I renovate the front, like how you say, the garden. I put plants. I paint the interior. I make it more commercial, gallery looking, but with the uh, studio feeling. And, uh, I have a terrible, terrible, amazing, amazing support from the local community, and the response is amazing. In the last year, it went over 100 paintings sold from that location. Most right. of my, my partners, my gallery friends, and uh, they don't believe it. Well, it's true. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Like I say, it is very enticing because even on the quarter, we have a few of these uh, archways leading into courtyards where painters are using. For the most part, it's strictly formal gallery. So this is a combination of, of both. It's got that enticing garden. It looks like it would lead to a, a little shotgun house, one of the homes that he would paint, but then opens up into the gallery space behind. So it's really intriguing. And Martin does participate, for those who know uh, our artist community, has um, galleries open from the first month in September, I believe it is, through May. First, uh, last month, last first Saturday in May. Every Saturday's open. I believe he's open as well. So this is a great place. There's several of them uptown, but of course a lot of people concentrate on that Julia area. But this would be a great place to start as you work your way down Magazine to uh, Julia. Now, is the gallery named after you? I didn't see a name to the gallery. Is there a name on it? Yes, it's named after me. It's, okay. uh, it's, the name is uh, Martin Lou Gallery. Very easy. Very easy. And uh, are you open during the day standardly? It's only by appointment. Uh, it's mostly by appointment. I open uh, from uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. 
every week, but uh, some Mondays and Tuesday, you have to call me, and uh, you have to make an appointment yeah. because. Um, well, great. Well, that's and again, so all you need to do is look it up and give him a call, and we'll be. And oh, one thing, tell us about your website because you do have some paintings on there. Folks can take a look at that. What is well, your website address? The website is uh, martinluke.com. Martinluke.com. And you will find uh, telephone number, location, all the details, and most of my artwork, like old artwork, new artwork. Excellent. So a virtual gallery, folks. So <laughs> if you missed a show or you want to see additional works, martinluke.com. Very, very easy. You couldn't get it easier. Well, let's go ahead. We're telling you so much wetting your appetite, but let's actually get into some of the paintings now because... Uh, it's no good us talking about it without you seeing them. Once you see them, I think you're going to become a believer. First one is entitled Walking Shadows. And uh, why don't you tell us about it a little bit, please? Well, this one is a cottage house, like a type, type of shotgun house, located mm -hmm. at um, Camp Street. I drive to the gallery near the neighborhood. I get inside the neighborhood uh, looking for houses. What, um, and this one spoke to me. And that's what happened with every house. Uh, drive, I drive, and they shine to me. So when they shine, I try to get a good shot of the house with my camera or make a sketch if I don't have my camera with me and uh, catch the soul of the house. This one in particular, I was driving around uh, noon, going to the studio, and I didn't have my camera with me. So I went back. I shoot the house, but of course that was late at night when I finished painting, one of my long days at the studio, and I catch the moon, and I remember some of the shadows from the middle of the day, when the sun hit it from the up, and uh, that's what I call it, walking shadows, because at night they have some different shadows uh, during yeah. the day, but uh, <laughs> what amazed me, I catch the full moon behind uh -huh. the house. Yeah, you see it up there in the left corner, beautiful full moon. And it's very fresh, this one. And the radiance is just phenomenal on it. So yes. uh, really, really lovely, folks. A great little, uh, looks like a single, a single gallery, uh, a shotgun, and really pretty. Beautiful colors. Well, uh, about what size is this on? And this is on canvas, as we say, all your works are. What size is this, uh, Martin, please? This size is 18 by 24 inches. Very common size, so easy for framing, folks. Uh, do you do gallery wrap, um, what is it, what they call it, gallery wrap the painting around the, the perimeter or no? I do by request. Okay. Well, I, I know a lot of people today are buying that because by the time they pay for their art, they don't want to put invest a whole not a bunch of other dollars in, in, a, in a frame. Not that a frame isn't worth it, but here's a, a great new thing. When they develop that gallery wrapping, they call it where they continue the painting around the perimeter sides. It's a piece that can be hung by itself directly without having to have it framed. So let's go on to another one, and this one's a little larger. This is very pretty. It's called Late View. Can you tell us about this one, please? Some really pretty colors in this. This one is still an uh, uptown house, the two-story house. Very common uh, column, very common structure with the shutters. And uh, this house is, uh, I stand in front of the house. I took the picture from underneath, and it had this uh, very common New Orleans uh, cast iron fence. Very pretty. They use it a lot in the French Quarter and in the uptown houses. And uh, of course, full moon again, uh, all the surrounded green trees and vegetation that character characterized New Orleans. And um, of course, they had two open windows. And um, it was very late. It was uh, 1 or 2, cl close to 2 AM. And uh, this one is have a very, very bright uh, ultramarine blue and uh, a lot of detail on the trees, and it's like it's hogging the moon. Yeah, it's I was gonna say, it's almost like it can, in photography, like a fisheye lens, you know what that is? Yes. Where it, it bends it around, all those mirrors that are con conical, or con uh, con anyway, there's a mirror that also does that, but it, right, it's framing the, the moon beautifully here, so it's just really an, an excellent view. So you, you bend it around, you get to see the entire house in this perspective, and really looks like the moon is the centerpiece. So really great with the galleries. What a lovely piece. About what size? Like I said, I know this is much larger than the first one. This one is uh, 24 by 30 inches. Beautiful piece. You know, Very nice elongated piece would look great in a hallway or 
uh, room depending on your size of your wall. So this would really be neat. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. This one's simply called Wondering. Let's see what we got there. It's, uh, now this is also 24 by 30, so we're staying in the larger size. In fact, a lot of you, this is one of the more, your more common sizes. But this is interesting, again, I love the vibrancy of the colors on this one. Tell us about this one, please. This one is um, a house neighbor, the, the other one, nearby. And uh, what I found on this one is uh, I was just wondering, what should I do? <laughs> That's what I named it, wondering. I was wandering around and looking for a house to shoot, uh, different than the other one. And I found this one is very similar, and I used the same color because it was around the same time, but also I catch the full moon in the top, and it's leaning to the left side, and uh, a lot of vegetation. I love uptown houses because uh, you found a lot of green somewhere oh, yeah. there. And uh, of course, that, yeah, that's go what ahead. This one, um, I don't know if the uh, TV camera is doing justice to it, hopefully your screen. The vibrancy of one, the yellow, which looks a little muted on our monitor here, but hopefully uh, is coming off stronger to you out there in the field. Paired with this, framed in this magnificent shades of greens and yellow with that vibrant foliage. Uh, go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I'm just, that's what impressed me so much on this is the vibrancy of the color here. And what I like of this one is the uh, New Orleans solid steel fence. The outdoor, outside fence, the front entrance of the house mm -hmm. is the solid real thing. It's like the old type of, you know, New Orleans fence, all like bent and with years and years of rust under the paint. Uh -huh. And that's what I like. Really one. nice, yes, with the raw and so typical of New Orleans with the two-story colonnade. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at another one. we got another one that same size. Now, this one's called Autumn Mist. So this is an intriguing title. Let's see um, what this, what can you tell us about this particular one? Well, this one, I call it Autumn Mist because uh, it's the mist you have in New Orleans. Uh, the humidity, the cold mist at night. And of course, you know, the full moon. And uh, it gets very intriguing and it gets, it gets very blurry in the, in the night. Uh -huh. And uh, so I can play with the colors, I play with my mind. Of course, I'm an artist and uh, I have a very free will uh, <laughs> mind. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the mist mixed with the uh, trees and the house, it creates amazing, amazing effects. Uh, of course, uh, I didn't put uh, much of the detail of the mist right. in the painting, but uh, I'm just happy the way it turned out. Oh, it's all the colors, again. and this one being a little closer perspective than the other, the other three is what I like as yes. well. So it's not always full capture of the house. Here you leave no. a lot to be desired, you know, like a lot to the imagination, which of course, which is happening at night or at that time of the night. Meant not everyone is is able to grasp the entire house, so it really yes. is a, a great concept there. Now we're going to something larger and, and a little difference of topic. So we're going away from the normal topic and going, this one is uh, 30 by 40, so it's a really size. And it's called Envy. What a title. Let's tell us about this lovely, lovely young lady. Well, this, this one is a suite of two. I have another one. It's coming next, of course. And uh, I have a long history be be behind this one because uh, this piece is very old. It's one year old. I painted it one year ago. And uh, the name is Envy, because... Um, and she was somebody local or before you came? No, no, it's just, every, I dreamed this. Oh, you dreamed I it. I dreamed this. And, and uh, this, this one got a lot of eye to the male person. Ah, okay. <laughs> and uh, the way I name it is Envy, and the next one is coming, of course, we're going to see it in a little while, is The Last Chance. And uh, this one, it didn't have The Last Chance, so it's Envy the last chance uh -huh. is out of the play and uh, I have it with me I, I'm gonna keep it myself in my personal collection because um, I can sell it as a set I understand. always somebody like Envy or they always like the other one and I try to sell it both together because right. they go together and they match together as a suite yeah yes and uh, I love the red the red go with oh, everything in the house but with the title, you could not pick a better color background than that lush yes. the the red. red. So uh, 
typical of envy, the idea of the, yes. you know, the building up of the, of the blood and the thing, that, that, that whole ferocious passion <laughs> that is dwelling. But really shows a great, great uh, ability to do a portraiture as well as what we've been seeing in, in the uh, homes. Now let's go to the other half of the suite, the reason why you can't get rid of it, and that's what's <laughs> called Last Chance, the same size, 30 by 40, and let's take a look and see what's, uh, why do we call this one Last Chance, since obviously the lady is envying uh, Last Chance. Well, this one is, um, she has a last chance to get into the play. They're really like competing for, for a play. Uh -huh. And uh, being like so many students, they only can pick five. And uh, they 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 fighting for the for the number five, and this one is, it will be the number five, of course. It, it has the last chance to prove itself, and uh, the other one is ambient, is envy this the, the last chance, and uh, I have a lot of response from this painting from a lot of women. They love this one, last chance, uh -huh. and uh, but of course I want to sell it both together. Right. I want I don't want to separate it. No. And what I love the balance because they both were basically would be facing each other. Yes, when you I mount them correctly, so, uh, yes, that, that that I think is just fantastic. So it really brings the whole title together by also mounting them facing each other. So yes. that really would be something. So so folks, he won't let it go unless you buy both of them. So you're gonna have to twist his arm or really come up with the bucks. But anyway, the beautiful paintings and great great colors. Now let's go back to his regular size, back to his 24 by 30, well, it's by 36, a little, and this one is called Whispering. Let's see if we can get that one up there. Whispering, and I think we're getting back to his normal subject now. So this one's 24 by 36, folks. We're talking to Martin Luke, a local painter who is enthralled with our city, our native architecture, and is really doing justice to the magnificent homes that we have located. So let's let's look at this one called Whispering. You tell us a little bit about it, Martin. This one is located at the French Quarter in uh, Royal Street. It's a typical French Quarter um, buildings with the balconies and, uh, of course, you know, the light colors up in Royal next to uh, Esplanade. Right. You found these dark uh, streets. It's n the French Quarter is not everything like shiny and no, very light. Right. So. I used to live over there, uh, next nearby, and uh, we always see this uh, person through the window, and uh, that's when you walk by, and uh, the name whispering uh -huh. is when you whispering to somebody else you're walking with, and saying, look, "Look, look at there! Look at there! Look at the window! Look at what happened there! What's yeah. going on there?" Of course, the French car have you know crazy things inside. So much there. stuff yes. going on, right? And that's when you whispering. You don't want to say it too loud because you don't want people in the balcony inside the window hearing you like what's some people somebody's looking at me right so right. you're whispering to somebody look at that. Right, because the typical three-story brick structure what i really like about it of course is the uh abatement i mean you, knowing new orleans being such an old city and of course we're way behind in a lot of our correction of our streets and repa repaving and so often the street or the sidewalk is is broken up and down so i love that part of the painting that right here we're focusing on now where it's no longer the straight edge of the balcony but there's a sudden drop and dip into it and it's so reminiscent of and, and true to the fact of you as you hop along or walk along you'll fall in a little crack uh, a, a almost trip on on broken sidewalks so it really is great to see that plus many of these homes were put together more than one one original structure that were united that also caused sometimes that different sizing of the floors or whatever. Truly a great, great representation of our French Quarter, especially along Esplanade. I think most people would certainly reckon, recommend, recognize a lot of that structure in, in a lot of the places down there. Okay, let's take a look at another one. We're going staying with the 24 by 36 oil. We have Martin Luke doing, uh, this one's called Taking a Walk. T taking a Walk. Let's talk about this one in a little more detail. Well, this one is uh, one of those uh, French Quarter nights on uh, perhaps a, a Friday night, walking under a full moon. When you take those long walks uh, up on Charles Street, and then you came down on Royal Street looking at the antique shops, art galleries, and uh, all type of little boutique business. And then um, you end up again next to Esplanade, 
on Royal or Chartres and uh, looking at the amazing full moon and uh, looking at those windows up in the attic on uh, a lot of buildings in the French Quarter right. have uh, the old I've been there and uh, the little room is very small <laughs> and uh, I always feel I always feel attracted by those little rooms with a window where you can look down and uh, it's very up in the buildings and I happen to have my camera with me I always take my camera with me and I took a shot out of that building but um, that night I dream with that house and uh, I had to make a painting, like a quiet, quiet, because it was a quiet, quiet Friday night on the quarter. And uh, if you get out of Bourbon Street, you know what I mean. When yeah. you get out of Bourbon Street, it's not like the typical crazy drinking right. French right. quarter night. Yeah, if you get out on the periphery, you well, and this is where most of the uh, natives live, and in a bedroom community, just like anyone else. So that's why you are getting into the quiet. But what I love about the color is. The tremendous uh, color reflected in the blue. It's midnight blue, or co uh, not cobalt blue, but it's truly the, for those who've ever seen a real night where it's clear and at this point of it where it's so concentrated, it's not black, it's really this magnificent blue. Just as magnificent as the, mag as the daily blues almost in the intensity. But it's so intense, and because of that, it causes the, sh the depth of the shadows and the uh, uh, the real, you know, just density of, of the whole situation. And, and that reflecting off the interior lights and the, the light colors of, of the place, the contrast is just tremendous here. So you really feel the solitude, as you mentioned, the quiet stars in the background, as if just most people who not know the quarter say there's no way this could be in the quarter because it's such a quiet thing. But yes. it's certainly true. If you take your tour to the end of uh, the quarter's periphery, you're going to see so many structures like this and uh, that are certainly domicile to many of our local residents and people who have come here to love our city. We're talking, talking to Martin Luke. He's a transplant from Buenos Aires, uh, fell in love with the architecture of our city, and he's uh, just doing it justice on canvas and oil for all the community. We want, as you see, our director has posted the phone numbers. Don't hesitate to call and ask us any questions about Martin Luke Gallery. As we mentioned, his website is martinluke.com, so you can see a whole bunch more of paintings, plus you can also get complete directions to his magazine. Like, I mean, it's very easy to find one block off of Napoleon, well, really, it's in the second block, in between uh, Jenna and Cadiz, right next to formerly what was Carol Robinson Gallery. So don't go in the building, go in through the gate, right by the fish, and, yeah, and you certainly will... Uh, find it uh, truly enjoyable. Um, again, Martin is doing all of his work here in oils on canvas, lovely sizes ranging from the 18 by 24 up to the uh, 24 by 30s, it's kind of usually the 24 by 30 and 24 by 36. So he's got a lot in that size, which is a really good frameable piece or non-frameable if you want to do the gallery wrap that really will take charge in any size wall. So it's not not confined to something that's really small. You got a nice size without being oversized. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at one more painting because then we've gotta go back to our musician. And this one is called uh, Near Rampart. And what size is this one, please? This one is 24 by 30. And, um, this is a great, great piece. Let's talk about this one. This one is uh, St. Philip, near Rampart, where you found uh, these coated houses, little, little, like a, shotgun houses type and then next to a big big two story or three story building and uh, this one is uh, near it's very close to Rampart and St. Philip I won't say the right address because it's a commission and I don't want to get involved with one of my customers and make it public but uh, I love the shadows of the uh, yeah now is this actually two structures abating each other or one this is two structures. Two, that's what I, I, I can imagine. And the top one has that wonderful wraparound balcony, huh? Yes. That goes from one which is so great in the quarter because there's nothing better than either late in the evening or early in the morning having a cup of coffee or late evening having your cocktails uh, out, out there on the balcony with that great railing just watching 
in the evening watching the uh, quarter come to life with regard to all the entertainment venues, and in the morning watching it slowly wake up and getting ready to its normal business of welcoming tourists and doing all the things it has to do to sustain itself. And yet, this magnificent structure attached to a very formidable townhouse uh, adjacent structure, unified by common walls, usually are very minute spaces, since in those days they certainly didn't have the uh, codes that we have today with regarding space differential. But truly, truly, again, the vibrancy of the blue and the stars and the moon got some real nice paintings for you folks. And uh, let's talk a little bit more before we go to the, uh, to the artist, uh, musician at least. Anything else you want to tell them about your work? Uh, about my work? <laughs> Um, I just found it very interesting. Um, the so you do feel that you're going to be able to, that we have enough subjects out there to keep you going for a while? Forever. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I believe it. I, as I mentioned, I think, uh, uh, I think he's got some really great, only ones I'd like to see a little bit more, maybe a little bit more daytime, but today we've kind of focused on the evening. I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood you, but I didn't think all of your paintings were done in the evening, are they? No, no, no. Because I think there we're going to really be able to see some, a lot more of the wonderful pastels, because of course, you know, we, yes. that colorization, which used to be exclusive to the French Quarter, has come out to Uptown and Mid-City, where we're getting away from just the everyday white and green, and going to these wonderful hues of every color in the, in the uh, spectrum. And I have to admit that there's no way to see those colors at night without having them uh, toned down about because of the uh, lunar effect. So I'm anxious to see some of you. I don't know if you have on in the last half of the show, but hopefully we'll get to see more in your gallery or, or in your website when we start seeing a lot more of these day shots with some of the real vibrant colors of the, of the, of the they're painting these houses today. I do have more uh, on the website with the uh, daylight um, view. Uh, I have a very busy, busy uh, Christmas time and uh, Marigold time where uh, most of the people took um, away from me, like all the day daylight uh, pictures. And uh, but I will have some more in the future uh, near summertime because uh, that's what I'm getting, like all the pastel color looking paints and uh, reds, uh, light blue, and. Uh, very, very quiet yeah. summer, spring looking paintings, uh, and I'm getting ready for summertime. Good, good. And I hope you, if you haven't branched out, and uh, I think some, a lot of subjects on Esplanade, you know, we've got some magnificent homes there, and of course, and of course, a lot of them have been done many times. But the effect of the oak trees, I think, uh, lining the avenue really adds a lot to those. So maybe you'll pick one or two along the uh, near the bayou, along, along Garden, the Bayou St. John, along the Esplanade Avenue. Yes, I will. And uh, I did have some. Uh, I went through a lot of paintings last uh, last year. Yeah, I heard and you were uh, telling us you were cleaned out. Yes, I was. I was clean out a hundred paintings. That's a lot <laughs> for an art gallery. And um, you will find a lot of interesting, different view, different painting, different colors on the website. And uh, of course, if you come into my gallery, you will find um, more interesting things. I have more paintings in the gallery, and I will have uh, amazing things in the future. I plan in a renovation on the front of the gallery, where I don't know what is going to be the uh, response from the uh, neighbors, but I hope it's good. <laughs> I do too. Well, um, one other question, and I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot with this. Is that because so many of us take pride in our own homes, do you do any custom work if someone wants you to do their house? I do a lot of custom work. Bro. You do? I do a lot. Oh, and, great. Uh, uh, so you just have to happy. take a number and we get in the production line, is that right? Yes, that's what happened. And you have to get me a very good time to get a custom made piece is summertime so, yeah. because it's usually very slow. And, uh, and you have so much more time during the day and all to capture the subject with the... Uh, Especially if you're doing daytime work with regard to the length of the lengthening of the day, you know. Yes. To capture the sunlight. Yes. For those who like the sunlight. Well, okay. Uh, I think um, I think we're ready to go back to our musician again. We're talking to Martin Luke. Let's hear those phone calls coming in at the end. And I'm sure you got some interesting questions. A very fascinating young man 
with some beautiful work. But now let's go back and hear from that uh, young lady we heard and did that first song. Her name is Jan Beal, and I think you saw her CD. Let's see what she has to offer for her second song. This song is on my uh, first album, Between the Bridges, and also on No Country, and um, you can hear some of it on the Lullaby album, Songs for My Baby. But I did just move down here. I moved into the Irish Channel, and on my way here today, they're celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And I was thinking that Robin's last little purple fairy there, I think it looks like he's been hanging out with some of those leprechauns. <laughs> anyway, this song, Across the State Line, I was more in the mood of a Robin's version of The Scream when I wrote this one. Yeah. 
many colors Oh, love Very, very nice. And look there, oh, was it? Jan Beal doing her second song for us, folks, and she'll come back for one more. She's still a little country, but uh, she uh, made it a little sweet at that time. And you saw the cover of her CD. Uh, we're here today doing Artist Review, uh, three R's. Uh, uh, with, with going to New Orleans, hopefully we can call it New Orleans, not born, but certainly resident artist Martin Luke. Uh, from who is gracious enough to bring in about 14 of his wonderful oil paintings. And we mentioned his primary focus, now that he fell in love with our city, is the architect, residential architecture. And you're seeing that in some great works he's got. Uh, we mentioned his gallery, Martin Luke, is on uh, magazine between Jenna and Cadiz, one block, two blocks off of Napoleon on the uh, lakeside. And he's got a wonderful entrance Vieri Gate with one of the Festival of Finns, so very enticing, beautiful sculpture garden as well as the paints, paintings and leading into the couple of interior rooms. He's open during the first Saturdays of the month in the evening when all the other studios are open, open by appointment other times. And don't forget to check out his website, martinluke, M-A-R-T-I-N-L-U-K-E dot com. You've seen the number. He would love to hear from you. We would as well to ask any questions of this great new painter. But without uh, waiting for that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at his last five pieces. And the first piece is entitled Blooming. So let's take a look. And this is uh, 24 by 30, I believe. Is that right, Martin? Yes, that's right, Bob. Tell us about this. Is this, this obviously looks like a French Quarter scene with those lights, huh? Yes, it's a French Quarter scene, and it's uh, springtime in the quarter. Uh, very... Uh, Hot spring night. <laughs> uh, this is my new work. This is the color. This uh, is great. It's almost like the mint. I mean, the mint I know is several story on Esplanade, but it's that same vibrant red, federal red brick or stucco, or whatever on the on the columns, on the uh, excuse me, on the facade. But I mean, uh, go, go ahead and tell us more about it, please. Uh, this one is my uh, one of my new collection, and uh, I use a lot of reds, a lot of violet, a lot of, a lot of purple colors, a lot of yellow and uh, some black lines and a lot of green on it. Uh, very bold, bold color, very close up, perfect, perfect tips. And uh, of course, with a little full moon stars all over the sky. And uh, it will be the next, the next team for the last, uh, for the l last summer. With the great gas land yeah. lining it up. So truly a nice piece. and. Uh, Again, folks, this is one of the newest pieces he has in the gallery, so uh, sometimes it's always, sometimes it's better to get the older work, sometimes it's nicer to look for something real fresh. And I like it because I was just, I was asking, trying to see some of those daylight vibrancies and pastels, this great red that he had on that other envy, he's brought into the uh, network of the facade of this building and really is adds something to the painting. Now the next one we want to call, take a look at, is called Blue in the sky, and it also is a 24 by 30 on oil, again, on canvas. And tell us, this one is almost uh, similar to the other one, but in colors, but let's hear about it. Uh, this one is uh, the new collection, also the new colors are using. And um, it's uh, two buildings together with all the courses, a lot of going on inside the building. You can see the yellow in the windows. That means all the lights are on. It's very late at night. People are partying inside. It's a French Quarter night. It's a, of course, again, it's a spring night. And I found this deep ultramarine blue in the sky. It's a blue sky, and it's very rare in New Orleans to find blue in the sky. I also found like, so many colors in the sky at night. And uh, of course, in summer nights and spring nights. And uh, it's one of my new pieces. Uh, I use the same colors like the other one. And um, it will make a nice, 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 um, decoration for your living room or it can go in the kitchen. Very pretty. Very. I like the way the sy symmetry of this particular one. Really nice. Okay, now that was bl called Blue in the Sky, but the next one we're going is just simply called Blue. So I don't know if we're going to be just looking at the sky or what. Again, he's sticking in that 24 by 30 mode and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this particular oil painting titled Blue. 
Ah, uh, this one's really vibrant. I like this one. Go ahead. This one is a very um, big full moon. I'm, I love full moons. I love the moon. I love the, we the, we the, noticed that. <laughs> okay, thank we you. We noticed that. <laughs> And uh, th I used a lot of blue in this one. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I probably feel blue that day when I paint this one. <laughs> and uh, I have a lot of requests from my customers. They need blue. They need a lot of blue. They love blue. And uh, that's why I incorporate a lot of blue reflections on the window. Or uh, blue shadows. Of course, I have some green shadows going around. A lot of uh, stars on the sky. Again, the tree going inside the, the, the balcony, the branches all over typical New Orleans uh, houses. And uh, I just love to call this one blue because I feel blue that day. Okay. Well, let's move on because we, we're running short of time. We got a couple more. We want to get them all in before we go back to our, our musician. The next one uh, we have is called. Quarter night, back in the quarter again, and uh, this would really almost reminiscent of the first one with that that great uh, arch curve that you put into the original house. Tell us about this one, please. Uh, this one is uh, near the quarter. It's when you cross this plane on the quarter. It's called in the Marini neighborhood around, and uh, that's when you walk in the quarter, going to Frenchman Street, and you found these uh, French quarter, quarter houses, little houses, and. Um, what I found me, what I found amazing on this house was the symmetry of the fence, the front fence, the black fence. It just yeah. looked amazing. Really does. It looks okay. Amazing. Now, like I said, we're just about out of time, so we're getting our last one placed up for you, and it's called Second Look. What a nice title! Oh yeah, look at that one, please. Let's, this is a great look. The history behind this one is uh, the same building. Uh, we just saw a painting in an old angle, and uh, this one is the same building, but I just give it a second look. And I found something very interesting in the window. And uh, that's why I have to go back, get you know, closer to the uh, window, and look, try to look to the inside. And uh, I can't just name it on, the, on TV what, what I see inside, but if you come into the gallery, I'm glad to tell you what I see inside. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, have, we have to watch what we say on here. But yes. obviously, as we mentioned, these are residential, so anything can be going on at any period of the day and night. And you captured it, but obviously not enough to uh, cause anybody any kind of problems. All right, uh, we're here. We've been here with uh, Martin Luke. Uh, he was gracious enough to bring... 14 of his oil paintings in, uh, we tell you lovely sizes from 18 by 24 up to 24 by 36, I think his largest piece. Uh, his gallery, uh, one more time, is on magazine between Jenna and Cadiz, two blocks off of Napoleon on the lake side, right next to the formerly Carol Robinson Gallery. It uh, will, um, it <laughs> okay, it uh, is inviting through the um, through the lovely garden. We want to tell you all that we appreciate you seeing us. Come back next. We've got a lot of new restaurants opening. Antoinette's we tell you about uptown. Uh, there's one open Friday called Restaurant One in the Old Padrinos. So hopefully we'll be back with a restaurant next week. Uh, but if not, we'll see you with something else to keep you informed. Take care. Have a good weekend. And let's finish it out with Miss Jan Bell. In New Orleans is Lola's on Esplanade oh, and their Spanish food and their seafood, their paellas and fidwas. So good. And um, anyway, but other than that, I was going to be joined by my old friend Samantha Parton, who uh, we used to live down here together about six years ago and we, we were called the illegitimate daughters of Johnny Cash back then. And um, this is a song actually that Samantha wrote, Samantha Parton, she's a Canadian lady, and it's called Lonesome Blues. Some blues are just blues Mine are the lonesome blues Some blues are just blues Mine are the lonesome blues All the birds flew sad
red wing Just like an aeroplane I wish I had wings Just like an aeroplane 